Oh, hey, it's me. And yes, you have landed in the right place. Something a little bit different today because, well, why the hell not? I thought, why not discuss Tesla? In particular, the potential for their humanoid robot while well, I do a little bit of pit farming in Diablo 4. Now, the reason for this video is just to discuss the ultra long term. So, fair warning, if you're a short term investor slash trader slash gambler and you think in days, weeks, months or years, as opposed to multiple decades, this is absolutely not a safe space for you. However, if you want to talk about the long term of Tesla's humanoid robot, that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Now, I thought about originally producing a spreadsheet and putting half of you to sleep and arousing the other half of you who are total number nerds. By the way, I'm not hating. I fall into that ladder camp myself. But you know what? I decided something a little bit different today. I'm going to put something completely unrelated on screen for a reason, because I want you guys to really think through the numbers that we discuss and the concepts at a high level yourselves. So here's how I personally think about Tesla's humanoid robot. Now, first, we're going to contrast that with what Elon Musk said on Tesla's annual meeting the other day. He gave the example of Tesla. Let's just call it, we'll round the numbers a little bit, roughly a 25 to $30 trillion valuation just based on humanoid robots. And how did he come to that number? The assumptions were quite simple. He believes over the long term, there could be a billion humanoid robots produced per year, which is reasonable. We're probably going to have 10, 20, 30, 50, maybe 100 billion humanoid robots over the long term. So if that's the case, imagine that Tesla has just a 10% share of just 1 billion bots. That's 100 million humanoid robots produced in a single year. Now, I know these numbers sound crazy, but they're reasonable over the long term. That's 100 million humanoid robots. If Tesla makes a $10,000 profit on just the hardware sale alone, that is literally, literally, one more time, literally $1 trillion per year in profits just from humanoid robots, just from the hardware sales, the $10,000 profit per bot. That alone, if you put a 25 to 30 times a multiple on it, gets you to a 25 to $30 trillion valuation. Very simple math. But here's the kicker. I think Elon Musk may have been downplaying the potential valuation implications of 100 million robots per year. Now, why do I say that? Well, unless Tesla has a plan that seems a little bit unlikely to me, but hey, you never know, in which they will literally just sell the bots, the hardware, and then not have a software subscription, which would kind of be like selling a Tesla without FSD as a software subscription, just giving it away for free. Unless they're going to do that with the humanoid robots, I think what's more likely is not only will Tesla be selling these humanoid robots for a profit on the hardware, just like they do for their vehicles, but in addition, there's going to be a monthly software subscription. So we've already reached a 25 to $30 trillion valuation just based on a 10% share of a billion humanoid robots per year, just on the hardware sales, a $10,000 profit. Now, let's just assume conservatively that each of these humanoid robots per year, customers are paying roughly $1,000 a month, but we'll round down a little bit so we get a nice round number in again. Now, we'll have another $10,000 per year. The bot sold for $10,000 profit. Let's call it a $25,000 purchase price and 15 of that's cost. So you've got $10,000 additionally of pure profit just on the hardware. But if there's a software subscription, which is bringing in a further $10,000 per bot just in a single year, that would be another 25 to $30 trillion in terms of valuation. Absolutely batshit insane. We're now talking a 50 to $60 trillion market capitalization, but wait, there's more, a growing fleet. If Tesla's fleet of humanoid robots continues to grow, likely that it will. I mean, so is their vehicle fleet, right? They've got now six plus million vehicles on roads. It's getting bigger. Over the long term, if their vehicle fleet continues to grow even more, you know what's gonna happen, right? So if Tesla's doing $10,000 in profit per bot per year on 100 million, and then each bot into the fleet of bots is also bringing in per year an additional $10,000 in profit. Every 100 million Tesla bots produced adds 25 to $30 trillion of valuation to the company at an annualized rate. But then each of the bots into the fleet at 100 million per year is adding another 25 to $30 trillion in market cap due to the software subscription, call it roughly just under $1,000 a month. Now, here's where things get absolutely fucking insane. Just imagine that rate of production for the span of an entire decade. So imagine that Tesla's producing 100 million humanoid robots per year for an entire decade. Now, we have a fleet of 1 billion humanoid robots, each paying roughly $10,000 per year in software. Wanna do the math here, ready? We're now talking a potential valuation. <laughs> I'm gonna say it because it's true. So we're now talking at a 10 year production rate of 100 million humanoid robots so you now got a billion Tesla humanoid robots in the global fleet, which could be 10% of the entire bot fleet, give or take, if there's a roughly one-to-one -one ratio of bots to humans. 
<laughs> we're now talking ten trillion dollars in annual profits on the humanoid robots. Now again, if you put a twenty-five to thirty times the multiple on that, we are now talking <laughs> about one quarter of a quadrillion dollars of market capitalization. I'm just going to say that again, right? Two hundred and fifty trillion. We're talking potentially one quarter of a quadrillion dollars of market cap. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm simply running through the exercise, the mental model, in terms of the back of the napkin math. If Tesla's doing $10,000 in profit per bot, we can pretty much ignore the hardware sales at that stage. But if each bot in the fleet is paying roughly $1,000 per month for the software, with <laughs> one more time, we could potentially, over a multi, multi-decade time horizon, be looking at a $250 trillion plus dollar market capitalization. Now, the question is, is it reasonable for Tesla to charge for the hardware to actually operate these bots? And obviously the answer is yes. They can contribute, they can do physical labor, but as they get increasingly more intelligent, they're also gonna do other kinds of labor as well. So just imagine it like this. If you're an employee, you have the option, let's just say hypothetically, you're an automotive company who currently employs UAW workers, whose average salary, all costs considered is six figures. Let's just round it to 100,000 bucks a year. Let's just imagine decades from now, and obviously these companies would be bankrupt long before then, but play along at home. Decades from now, if these companies were still producing vehicles and they had the choice, pay a human $100,000 a year and they can work maybe 40 hours a week and sometimes they come in hungover, tired, moody, etc. Or alternatively, we can pay literally 10% of that cost to have a humanoid robot that can work two or three times the hours per week, an increasingly capable and competent humanoid robot. They'd be absolutely insane not to be willing to buy these. So the value proposition that a competent, intelligent, useful humanoid robot that can do a variety of tasks, and remember, it'll keep getting better over time. The value proposition on something like this, you just can't compete. So it is extremely reasonable for the idea of Tesla charging monthly software subscriptions for a humanoid robot. Now, the real question is, how much would they charge? And would there be one single subscription for all functionality or would there be different tiers where you can get a package for, let's call it $600 a month where you get factory and warehouse worker or production line worker capabilities or a different subscription for homemaker, nanny, housekeeper, gardener. I think you guys understand where I'm going with this, right? There's a huge amount of potential here for Tesla to build a gigantic, gigantic fleet of products, not just vehicles, the humanoid robots that they can not only be making money selling the hardware, but far more importantly, have an ongoing perpetual recurring revenue stream to actually enable the subscription to the software that allows these things to go from a very heavy paperweight and expensive one to actually useful and capable. And again, over time, as these things become more capable, more competent and can add more value in the marketplace, solve more problems, do more tasks, save people more time, what do you think is going to happen to the value of the software? The value, not the cost necessarily, but the value of the software is going to increase enormously as well. And if that's the case, Tesla may have the luxury of charging a lot more than you might imagine. Now, I'm not here to say how much they will or won't charge. Who knows? I'm not a decision maker there. I'm nowhere near smart enough to figure out pricing. However, I just wanted to run through this thought exercise. Hopefully, a few of you have had a few thoughts yourself because it seems extremely likely to me. Now, I don't know for sure, but it seems extremely likely to me that Tesla's obviously going to sell these bots for a profit, or maybe they just lease them. Who cares? But the real thing here isn't actually the hardware sales, which was the example that Musk gave at the annual shareholder meeting, itself able to produce a 25 plus trillion dollar valuation. But it's the software subscriptions on a gigantic fleet. Just like Tesla's vehicle fleet is going to absolutely massively change the valuation of the company over time. Imagine when there's 10 million Teslas, then 100 million Teslas on roads, most of them paying for software, some of them producing revenue from robot taxis. It completely changes the business model and the way the company's valued, and obviously profitability as well. But humanoid robots are going to change this in a much more meaningful way. A vehicle being able to drive is super useful. A humanoid robot that over the ultra long term can essentially do any task and do so with almost no necessary cost. And what I mean by that is once you own the hardware, the only real cost of the humanoid robot is the energy to operate it, which is fuck all compared to paying a salary to a human. So the economics of these humanoid robots, I think the best way to describe them is just so fucking ridiculous. You just, you can't process it. That's why I wanted to run through this exercise with you guys today. Just to make you think, just think. And I really want to encourage everybody to build their own valuation model for this humanoid robot. Now, I know not everyone is a number nerd. In fact, I think the minority of people, but possibly about a 50-50 split from viewers on this channel who are numbers nerds and not. I really, really want to encourage even those of you who just eyes glaze over when you think about building a valuation model, you've got to take the time to think about the implications and not just think on, but I actually mean model them out. Make a very simple spreadsheet and just 
how many bots are they selling per year? How much profit are they making per bot? And then also, how much is each bot bringing in per month or per year in recurring, high margin, almost pure profit software revenue? Once you have a number, you've essentially got a profit per year that Tesla's producing from their bot business. Then all you need to do is figure out what is a reasonable multiple to put on that profit. Now, I think an extremely conservative number would be somewhere around that 25 to 30 mark. But I think more realistically, if this is primarily software, if they've got the software subscriptions, and that multiple could easily be 40 plus over the long term. And at that point, the numbers just get so absolutely ridiculous. If I said that out loud, I mean, we were talking about a 20, maybe a 30, but mostly a 20, 25 times multiple. And we still got two, a quarter of a quadrillion dollar valuation over the ultra, ultra long term. Imagine if that multiple was 30. We're now talking 300 trillion. Or what if it was 40? We're now talking 400 trillion dollars. It's just astronomical. So take the time to think about this. Model it out. You don't have to agree with the numbers. In fact, you shouldn't because they're not my estimates. I'm just telling you, if this is true, then this happens. If this is true, then this happens. But if you don't take the time to run through these assumptions, if you're looking at Tesla, anything in car company or autonomy and robotaxi, and you're not thinking about the humanoid robot opportunity, you may regret this two, three, four decades from now. And I know that's a long time, which is another reason why I encourage everybody to look after their health as much as possible. Try and live as long as possible to make sure that you're here to see the benefits from this. And also, how fucking good is the future going to be? Like, let's just take a moment to appreciate. If Tesla is successful in pulling off these humanoid robots, which hopefully, uh, I'm not going to make a joke about humanoid robots pulling off customers. If they're successful in doing this, and I think that success is not guaranteed, but they have a very good chance, a head start. They've transplanted the brain from the vehicle, which nobody else has, into the humanoid robot. So I don't see people catching up now. It's possible someone could do this. But in these assumptions, again, we only talked about Tesla getting a 10% market share. But if they're successful, as I've said in the past, and I really wanted to underscore this, the humanoid robot is going to make everything else in Tesla's business look like a rounding error. I mean this literally. This is not hyperbole. I usually do speak in hyperbole, but this is not a joke. Okay, if Tesla's lucky when fully scaled, hardware sales on their automotive business could be maybe a couple of tens of billions of dollars a year. Now, contrast that with not billions, but trillions of dollars in potential profit from humanoid robots. We're talking multiple orders of magnitude here. This is just too hard to compute, which is again why you really need to take the time to build your spreadsheet, build a valuation model, and think about the implications, as opposed to just going, oh yeah, bot will be cool, whatever. Take the time and think about it. Now you've got to ask yourself another question. How many bots, realistically, could humans require on Earth? What's the ratio of bots to humans is a good way to think about it, and must sort of describe things in these terms. Is it one to one? It's got to be at least one to one, right? Everyone, right? Just assume, forget about affordability, forget about that. If everyone could afford to have a humanoid robot, at least one, surely you'd want them. Because now you've got somebody to take care of menial tasks, housework, dishes, whatever it is. Having something that you could offload some of those menial tasks to, would, everyone would want that, right? But then also, in addition to a one-to-one -one ratio with humans for their own personal needs, <laughs> including the Tesla Q Virgins, uh, I won't explain that any further. If you go a step further, you've got to think about commercial use as well. These things are obviously going to disrupt labor in a big way. So you've got at least a one-to-one -one ratio just from humans, and then you've also got commercial use, which you're probably going to want many humanoid robots per human worker today on average, right? Like, why would you not? Especially if they're significantly cheaper. So at this point, we could be looking at demand for at least a billion bots a year. I think these assumptions are pretty realistic over the long term. And it could be a lot more than that. If there's a 10 to 1 ratio of humanoid robots to humans over the long term, and there's roughly going to be, let's call it 10 billion humans, we're talking about 100 billion humanoid robots. And those assumptions we talked about there, one Tesla doing 100 million humanoid robots per year. It will take them 10 years, 10 years to make 1 billion robots. If there's a 10 to 1 ratio of humanoid robots, we're talking 100 billion robots. Do you understand the math on this, guys? It's just so fucking ridiculous, you can't believe it. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. I just really wanted to try to emphasize the fact that this is a big opportunity. You need to think about it. Oh, and um, about the Diablo 4. I thought, I just had this idea. I thought, you know, why the fuck not? Probably be back to our regularly scheduled programming tomorrow. I love ya. But yes, don't sleep on the humanoid robot. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel.
Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. There's plenty more to come. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference, no more afternoon fatigue, it's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people, right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst that could happen? Try for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe... You might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.